Mary Roach, people call you the most entertaining science writer in America. You've got a new book. It's called Packing for Mars. You were a kind of virtual astronaut for a couple of years. Tell us about it. I was. I, was, uh, I took advantage of the fact that NASA has all these simulations. Anything they're going to do up there, they do down here, which means sort of you can almost go to space without leaving home, which is what I did. I tried out the shuttle training toilet room. I was up on Devon Island where they were doing a simulated rover expedition. Um, I was uh, over at the bed rest facility where they simulate zero gravity by having people lie in bed for three months at a time without getting up at all. I, I was not a subject. I draw the line somewhere. In the book, you say that it's not the heroism of the astronauts that interests you so much. It's all the bizarre, awful stuff they had to go through to get there. Yeah, Talk yeah. about some of it. We're a family program, but tell <laughs> us about some of it. Yeah, yeah, you could kind of call this book the wrong stuff, <laughs> the gross <laughs> stuff. Coca-Cola, at a certain point, wanted very badly to have their product in space. Pepsi, too. Like and global or universal like product placement. Universal product placement. On the International Space Station, the shuttle, they were very, they've spent $450,000 to come up with a carbonation device for zero gravity because bubbles, you know, zero gravity, everything weighs the same so the gas doesn't rise to the surface. So what that means in a human stomach, normally, when you swallow air or carbonation, it, it all rises to the top of the stomach where it could then be expelled when you belch and then you feel better. So the astronauts would drink Coca-Cola and go, mmm, Coca-Cola, tasty beverage, and then realize that they were feeling more and more bloated and uncomfortable. And I talked to a, uh, the food scientist, uh, resident food scientist from NASA at the time, who said, unfortunately, um, burps were accompanied by a liquid spray because you, know, you would burp, but then some of the liquid on top would come in. So it was very unpleasant and distasteful. So that was so much for Coca-Cola and beer, sadly. There's a serious side to your book, too. You, you say that there are really two types of people who go into space. We think of the astronauts, the right stuff guys, but there's really a whole right. other group who are doing very important work. Right, right. Well, the, yeah, the right stuff guys, those were really important when it was a small mission and very few people had gone. You wanted people to be really aggressive and brave and self-starters and fearless, but now you've got six people for a long time in a can together with no way to get out, no way to you know, slam the door and go for a drive, so you want kind of uh, people who play well together. And some of them are kind of nerdly types, right? These are scientists, yeah, 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 and, yeah. No, and they, what kind yeah, of work yeah, are they they're, doing? They're you've got engineers, you've got um, biomedical researchers, you've got, yeah, there is likely to be nerds as kind of like macho military guys. There's still a lot of people with a military background, but... Any yeah. place you couldn't go? Anything you weren't allowed to see? <sighs> yeah, I, ha I had this desire to, when the shuttle lands, I wanted to go right on board like I wanted to experience like what does it smell like in there after a two-week mission because you can't take a shower in space because the water just forms these blobs so you're using your moist towelettes which is you know, and then you're wearing the same underwear for anywhere from two to seven days I was told